I can't believe I just won a gold medal at the Rio de Janeiro Olympics. <laughs> <laughs> Are you okay? Where am I? I was at the Rio 2016 Olympics. That was 150 years ago. Now the city is alegria, which means joy in Portuguese. Who are you? I'm Madison Nichols, gold medalist. I'm Adriana Benicki, alegria city planner. I'm Jeremy Gronke. I work with Adriana here at City Hall. I'm a chemical engineer for the Waste Free Era. This is amazing. Wait, what is the Waste Free Era? It's the waste management program in alegria. It's part of our city infrastructure. Yes, a lot has changed in this city. We can show you our city model here and give you a tour. Is this Copacabana Beach? Is that a maglev sky train? Wow, I studied environmental engineering in college, but I'm sure your city has things I've only dreamed of. Our sky train is an efficient point-to-point -point transportation system. When you need a pod, you call one through the transport app and it will take you directly to your destination. Maglev technology was also used in these vertical wind turbines. I bet maglev turbines are far more efficient than the ones with ball bearings. Exactly. They're one of our efficient and environmentally friendly power sources, along with our underwater ocean turbines and building integrated multi-junction solar cells. I noticed on your sign that All Agria has a Living City Award, a pedal certification. Some of the pedals categories are beauty, building rainwater capture, renewable energy, and environmentally safe construction materials. Right. Our entire city achieved excellence in these categories. Other pedals features include bike sharing, edible parks, and hydroponic rooftop gardens. In fact, all of the food in Allegria is grown locally, in rooftop gardens or vertical farms, which rotate for optimal sunlight and have staggered agricultural growth cycles. The food in Allegria must be fresh and organic. But when I was in the Rio Olympics, Brazil was the fifth largest global producer of trash. The only recycling system was the catadores, citizens who hand-picked recyclable goods for the dumps. How did you fix that? You're right, Madison. Trash was a big problem in Rio. We were wasting resources such as organics, packaging, and electronics. We have a saying in Allegria, waste is a misplaced resource. Our engineers collaborated to create a closed-loop, complex system of systems, which outlines the flow of all goods in a waste-free city. The waste-free 11 R's approach follows this process. First, the government, manufacturers, and public committed to responsibly recognize the value of all resources. Resources are directed to one of three destinations, rot, repair, or reuse. In the rot process, organics are sent to decentralized anaerobic digestion units, located in the basement of every multi-use building. This creates digestate for our rooftop gardens and energy, which is used locally. The reuse loop was a unique solution. Since single-use packaging made up a substantial part of waste, all agree as engineers created a new packaging system. Cotton bags and transparent aluminum are continuously reused in original form after they are sanitized and redistributed. How do you make sure all the packaging goes back to the <coughs> correct place? ID chips enable tracking and distribution to both grocery stores and manufacturers. Packaging is Bitcoin value and can circulate both locally and globally. What happens if an item is broken? Durable goods in Allegria are designed with repair in mind. Broken items are taken to the local repair shop, where replacement parts are either 3D printed or laser cut using the worldwide CAD database. All items beyond repair are sent to either be recycled or chemically recovered at the materials recovery facility. After they are shredded and separated, robots move usable commodities. Then the reverse logistics department sells them globally. If an item cannot be recycled, it is sent to the end of life process called supercritical water oxidation. Oh, I learned about supercritical water oxidation in my waste management class. In the process, waste is sent two miles into the earth in a gravity pressure vessel. Then, the natural geological forces of heat and pressure drive the water medium into a supercritical state. Exactly. The resulting end products are salts, gases, and biosolids. These materials are then reimagined and re-engineered into new items. This completes the product life cycle. How do you make sure all the citizens in all agree follow the waste-free 11 R's approach? An integral part of the waste-free era are the multi-use buildings. They include condos, rooftop gardens, restaurants, grocery stores, and anaerobic digestion units. 
We designed a convenient system for both food delivery and waste disposal. Dumb waiters deliver food to residents from on-site bulk packaging grocery stores or rooftop gardens. Building integrated waste disposal chutes flow to the basement. There, waste is categorized by a scanner that determines its destination and directs it to MRF stations through underground pneumatic tubes. That is a complex system of systems. I'm sure you use the engineering design process to identify the trash problem and learn the specifications. And you must have had a great team of engineers who brainstorm solutions and then design the process. But what kind of improvements did you have to make when you tested your ideas? The first version of the waste disposal chute was aluminum. The problem with that was food would frequently get stuck to the sides. The redesign chute was made from slippery, liquid-infused, porous surfaces, an omniphobic Teflon material. We also had to analyze risk factors. The reuse of containers and biomedical products could transfer pathogens. Activated and electrolyzed water is used to clean packaging, while gamma irradiation sterilizes biomedical products. After the waste-free era was refined and implemented in all Agria, we shared our solution with other cities. It sounds like there was a lot of engineers involved. Environmental engineers, like me, would make sure the water table and soil was not harmed. Agricultural engineers would have helped design the rooftop gardens and vertical farms. Yes, and our material science engineers found a way to make new plastic composites using the Materials Genome Project. I work with Chloe, our head civil engineer who designed the city's infrastructure, Edward, an IT engineer who designed the ID and tracking systems, and Skeen, a mechanical engineer who designed the underwater ocean turbines. In fact, we are on our way to meet them all at the Carnival Parade on Copacabana Beach. Would you like to come with us? Yeah, <laughs> let's go. Now I see why you named your city All Agria. It truly is the city of joy. What do you think the most complex engineering problem was that you had to solve in designing your city? So when looking that you have all your waste and that you have to get it from one place to another, you want to make sure that it doesn't have to travel a long distance. So making sure that everything's decentralized and staying in the city was a hard thing because you have to make sure everything can stay in the multi-use buildings, but also it can be distributed to the MRF stations where all the necessary equipment is to then treat it. So I think that was a hard thing when having to design your waste management system. Something that I think was hard was making sure to consider all of the different types of waste and making sure that you have a process to deal specifically with each individual type. Uh, like, like she said, we realized after we had to write down all the trash that we threw away and that we saw being thrown away on a whiteboard. And then we realized that we couldn't just have one system. We had to have a system of systems that could work together to create this complex system of systems. So since the waste management was the focal of your, your toughest problem, what was the most innovative solution you came up with out of your waste management system? I think the most innovative solution that we came up with would be the supercritical water oxidation because it can handle end-of-life products, but it doesn't, it doesn't just direct them out of the system. It can take the products that they're converted into and reuse them and redistribute uh, them back to be made into products again. In my opinion, it would be the repair stage because all we pre we uh, we're preventing waste in the repair stage, and we value what it takes to make something. We're able to use this. Uh, all durable goods are designed with repair in mind, and using the CAD database to fix these items. We realize that a lot of waste doesn't even deserve to be considered as waste. You can still use it for multiple items if you can just sanitize and just get it back to where it needs to go. So in our reuse loop system, everything has embedded tracking systems. So once they're used, they're sent back to then be cleaned with activated and electrolyzed water so that then they can be refilled with food or other packaging materials to then be redistributed. You've used a lot of phenomenal new engineering disciplines, a lot of engineers to work on your project. I was very interested, though, when you talked about edible parks. How do you make certain that people don't overeat in the parks and, and that you keep finding food for them? So one of the things with our edible parks is that once you, let's say, take an apple off the tree, next time you go to a store to get something, that charge can just be given to you there as just a natural thing that's uh, with our chat system, which is communication with holographic active technology. But that information doesn't really need to be stored anywhere. 
Sally picked an apple off a tree on Tuesday, September 22nd. That doesn't need to stay. So inside of our system, our IT engineers have to make sure that that information can then be deleted so there's inf uh, more space to hold information that comes off of other things through our edible parks and also other systems. Excellent. Could you tell me a little bit more about, uh, you described a lot of your purification systems. Could you describe those a little bit more in terms of um, what, you know, how they're uh, designed, for example, to purify your waste or cl clean your water and, and, and some of those aspects of how you ensure you have good, clean, sustainable air and water for your people? Well, for the clean air, we we were thinking about using incineration, but then we realized that it was sending off harmful gases. We watched a movie called Trashed, and it was just so polluted. And so that's when we all unanimously agreed not to use any waste to energy besides our clean anaerobic digestion. Also, something that we use for water purification is that whenever rainwater is collected, it can be it can percolate down through the building in um, cotton dipped in silver nanofibers. So it can it can percolate down through the building and then it can be sanitized at the bottom and redistributed. Also, we then uh, we tested actually composting and we had one in our backyard. It was pretty cool, but we had flies and maggots and mice, and so that wasn't good. So in our system, we wanted to make sure that all organic waste was contained and that it was immediately sent to anaerobic digestion, where no pest or smells are emitted. What is the most innovative aspect of your um, waste management system? I really like that we found a way not only to deal with waste as it comes to an end product, but that we made a system that can eliminate waste before it even is waste. So having a reuse loop, being able to uh, make sure that everything's sanitized and reused, and also having a repair system so that if something's broken, you don't have to throw the whole thing away, you can just repair the one part. I like that the pedals works together with our waste-free era. Excellent.